Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris and I'm speaking tonight to Howard Lee, the State Assemblyman for Pasir Pinji in Pera. And we're talking about the uh, politics in Pera. Now we, we have a new state government there. Um, let's talk a little bit about you were former state exco for youth sports and human development for Pera. Previously part of the state ex exco under Faisal Azumu. Now you're in opposition. I'm mm. wondering what that would mean for the programs that you had in place, mm. uh, what this would mean now in terms of working with people you once worked under and mm. now are in opposition to. How, do, mm. how does that dynamic figure? Um, it's going to be challenging, okay. uh, but uh, anything can happen and anything that you can imagine has happened and even beyond imagination has happened over the last few weeks. So let's put that aside. Uh, but I think fundamentally, uh, the policies that were rolled out right. and has been agreed at the state government level. Uh, I think they were uh, policies that were agreed by all, okay. including the now Munchi Basar. Uh, so I think f fundamentally, uh, I think uh, in order for, for him and his new government to want to go back on what, was, what has been agreed, he will, ask the, he, he will have to answer for that. Okay. But what I do want to say is uh, there was uh, the, the, the portfolio under my charge uh, had a few key, uh, I would say, results area. One was um, a very inclusive and an extremely uh, multi-pronged approach into youth development, uh, whether it's through policy and also through engagement, but also through uh, interventioning uh, or intervening in, in terms of what youth needs. Specifically, in terms of, uh, what we're uh, let's looking give, at. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, Tibet. Tibet education was uh, agreed by the state exco that I was part of mm -hmm. to be helmed under my portfolio. Okay. Uh, specifically under one agency called Pusa Aspirasi Anapera. Uh, and the, the focus was very much so in line with the federal government then, which was to, to work with government, uh, to, to essentially create a platform for government to be working closely not necessarily just with educational institutions but also with industry players mm. where we want to place people to be trained rather than training people to be hopefully placed okay. so essentially the direct first port of call is, is to engage industries industry, okay. so for them to be hired to be trained all right so uh, and in, uh, a co crucial component for tvet for absolutely sure. yes. absolutely Agreed. i'm a tvet professional myself i've never been to university uh, i'm a chef by trade and i i really i i would like to think that i understand that and that was uh, fundamentally why uh, i the portfolio was put under my charge okay. uh, and uh, a lot of work has been carried out over the last few months and um you know we've set up a special committee a special task force to uh, to facilitate uh, this dynamic of working educational institution, industry players, as well as government in realizing this. Now, with the new government that he has formed, with whoever the new ex is going to come in, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but that will fundamentally be one thing that I will be focusing on as opposition to ensure that agenda continues because uh, there is no other ways that you can see it could be run. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about how DAP um, is addressing you know, rumours surrounding DAP's involvement uh, in toppling the Menteri Basar and his administration. I mm. mean, uh, there, there's been a lot of speculation. I think there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, gossip mongering. What, how have you dealt with that kind of um, backlash or ad addressing rumours so that it doesn't fill a vacuum of silence? Okay. Uh, as you said, uh, there are rumours mm. and there are a thousand and a million and one rumours out there. And there are certain ones that has to be addressed and there are some that are just purely rumours. Well, now, I think it's only difficult or it needs to be addressed mm. if it can jeopardise a working relationship in the state. If it means that it's, mm. you know, you're unable to carry out social programmes, programmes that you talked about a little bit earlier, mm. then it becomes imperative to address these rumours. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yep. Uh, the DAP at the federal and the state level has come out countless times mm. to say that there has never been any uh, between the lines or expressed uh, directive to remove and or change the leadership of the state government. Okay. okay we've come out countless times to say that. However, uh, the fear mongering as well as rumours come out. Uh, we can't stop people feeling threats unto 
or that are brought onto by rumours. Uh, so perhaps there is something that we have to address in the long term. Uh, how to counter certain, uh, to a certain degree, fake news, how to counter rumours, and how to perhaps drive more, uh, how do I say it, how to drive more discipline uh, within the party so that um, certain personal statements do not get uh, taken as party stand. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, being a politician, I have to thread very, very carefully here. But fundamentally, I think discipline is one. Number two, to pick and choose our battles. Number three, to ensure that the what needs to be done, i.e., to to bring the best policies onto the fore through government or in in, in opposition, is the number one paramount goal that we strive for. And fundamentally some of it may have to come down to discipline okay all right so a couple of really interesting things that you brought up here and we've mm. got a couple of minutes before break but i do want to touch on them so you talked about a uh, communication discipline right mm. um Communication mm. seems to be an issue of the Pakatan mm. Harapan government, a uh, mm. lack of communication or a lack of coherent communication strategy. Uh, and this seems to be something that you're reflecting on mm. uh, through DAP as well. Have you learned any lessons about communication and the, the lack of discipline in terms of communication in DAP? I think um, it's two pronged. Number one, empathy. Uh, I think one of the key problems, uh, I can only speak on behalf of the DAP, uh, is that when you are so focused on delivering something, uh, things that has been agreed at uh, the state cabinet, you forget that there is a certain degree of politicking that needs to happen to get buy-in, uh, to get agreement. Uh, and this, I think the disconnect may not necessarily be, be between Harapan component parties, but the disconnect between those who are in government and the grassroots, those who are in government when, and the people you're trying to affect policy changes for. Okay. I think these are all bridges that we have to build. And the problem lies upon, uh, let me, let me sure. just finish mm -hmm. this. We live in a nation and a society of echo chambers. Echo chambers that have no bridges connecting in between these echo chambers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about between political elites and political grassroots, between, uh, between common men and women on the ground mm. with people who are within the political grassroots. And, these, and it's not just that, between uh, ethnic echo chambers, Facebook echo chambers, Twitter echo chambers, all these echo chambers, if we were not to address the lack of a bridge in between, this is a civilizational problem that no one has a solution yet, but we as a nation at least need to start doing that. And Harapan is going to try to address that, <laughs> okay. at least internally first. All right, let's uh, take a quick break and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.